Go, go. Look at arcs, chords, and tangents in circles. So we're going to go ahead and make a tab. We're going to actually um, fold it in half, hot dog style. And I'm going to cut it to the center. And you're going to cut the tab area to the center too. And then fold both the top and the bottom. I'm just going to cut the the tab area just so that it when it folds it's all together like that and I need three sections so I'm just gonna split the first half in two so now I have three sections I'm gonna pause the video and copy that down so we're gonna look at arcs and chords and tangent lines so I'm pause the video and copy those down as well all right so looking at the first one which has got to do with arcs and, co and chords the rule is um, simply if these two segments are, if you have two segments, two chords that are equal, then the inscribed arcs of those chords are also equal and it works vice versa. This is a listening check, color in the letter A. So again, if AB is equal, congruent to DE, then the arc measure of AB is also congruent to the arc measure of D and vice versa, which means if they tell you the two arcs are congruent, then the chords are also congruent. So let's take a look at an example. So if the two circles are congruent, what is the minor arcs WX? So that's the question. What is that arc? So we can see that that 38 is equal to that 38. That means a chord are congruent. That means those arcs are congruent. So how do I find this arc? Well, I know the whole circle is 360, so if I subtract 272 from 360, I'll get 88, which means the measure of the arc WU is 88, which means that it's also the measure of W arc WX. Okay, so let's look at another example. So if this information, those are the two chords, well, I know the radius is 5, so obviously all the radiuses are 5. So that's five, that's five, that's five, that's five. So they're all five. And if you remember, that's side, angle, side, right? Because you have a side and then an angle and then a side, which means the two triangles are congruent, which means then the two chords have to also be congruent. There's a listening check calling the two triangles in the circle. So JG is equal to IH. And then if I asked you about the measures of those arcs, those would also be congruent. So GJ is 12. Okay, so a nice easy one. If the chords are congruent, the measure of those inscribed arcs are also congruent and vice versa. All right, so let's take a look at two other rules for tangent lines. All right, so if you have a tangent line, which remember is a line that just touches the circle once, and the radius, which again is from the center to any part of the circle, those two lines will always make 90 degrees, always. So a tangent line and the radius always meet at 90 degrees. They're perpendicular. This is a listening check. Color in tangent line and radius always meet at 90. All right, so let's take a look at two examples with that. So let's say we had this triangle where we know that the radius and the tangent line will always be a right angle. But what do we know about right angles? Right angles, you can use Pythagorean theorem to find your missing side. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, c is always where the guy pees, right? So there's his legs and he pees on c. So a and b doesn't matter but c matters so fill in the numbers plug them into the calculator so you get c squared is equal to 264 take the square root of that it is going to be 12.8 now if they wanted this exact you can also leave it exact remember you just find out how many books so you take 164 how can i break that down divide it by 2 and that's going to be 2 times 82 and i can divide 82 by 2 again it's going to be 2 times 41. And there's no number that goes into 41. So those are my primes. So that makes 2 times 2 times 41. And have a book of what? A book of 2s. You can put that book outside. And then what's left inside? Just the 41. So if they want it exact, that's that. If they want it as a decimal, it's 12.8. Same thing here. Tangent and the radius always makes 90. And then we know all quadrilaterals, they add up to what? 360. So if I did 360 minus that 90, minus the 133 I have, and minus that other 90, I'll get whatever is left over. The so listening check, calling the two boxes in the quadrilateral. So angle V would be 47. Okay, so a tangent line and a radius, they meet at 90 degrees always. All right, let's take a look at the last one. 
the last one says that if you have two tangent lines, that the outsides of those are congruent. So tangent lines are congruent when they meet at one point. There are two tangent lines that meet, the two um, tangent lines are congruent. So looking at an example of that, so let's say you have 16 and x minus 9. What well, do you know that those two tangent lines meet, so they're congruent. So 16 equals x minus 9. Solve the equation. Add 9 to both sides, so x equals 25. Here's another example. They're meeting. The tangent lines are meeting, so we know they're congruent. Congruent means they're equal to one another. So y plus 2 equals 2y minus 4. And solve the equation. So subtract y and add 4. So you're going to get y is equal to 6. All right, so those are three new rules to look at. So we're going to practice these three rules so we can get really good at them. Let's practice.